Welcome back to the Hot 790 News. Thank you for staying with us. A new protocol has been rolled out by the Caribbean Doctors Association, which is a non-profit organization registered in France. The organization is spearheading a new snake bite protocol that will treat snake bites in both Martinique and St. Lucia. The protocol focused on the re-evaluation of snake anti-venom will be rolled out soon. The organization's secretary general explained to Hot 7 News how the new anti-venom and its issuing will work. A new official procedure governing the affairs of snake bite treatment in St. Lucia and Martinique was rolled out to over 60 medical, forestry and health professionals. Secretary General of the Caribbean Doctors Association, Kit Compton, spoke about the introduction of the new protocol. He noted that the collaborative efforts put forward by Dr. Deborah Razier of the University Hospital of Martinique and Professor Jose Maria Gutierrez of the Institute of Microbiology at the University of Costa Rica have generated a successful common antivenom for snake bites for victims in both Martinique and St. Lucia. What has happened recently is that, uh, based in Martinique, we have the president of this association. He's a doctor, he's a toxicologist, and he's very interested in the business of snakes and, and well, anti-venom for snake bites. So he's been working on developing a snake bite, a snake, anti-snake bite, a venom, anti-venom, so that the, <coughs> the guy who developed the one that we're using here and himself, they worked on this uh, for about six months in Costa Rica last year. And the idea is to update and to try and get a common vaccine, a common vaccine, or, you know, for the snake bite. St. Lucia and Martinique have the Ferdinands. They're very, very close. They're not exactly the same thing, but they come from the same generic family. So the purpose of this was to inform people, particularly the medical profession, as to what this new protocol is based on some of the discoveries that they made in their research in in Costa Rica. With snake bites recently being declared a neglected tropical disease by the World Health Organization, Compton added that there is now an increase of attention being paid to the tropical disease. Meanwhile, he said the perception of snakes needs to be re-examined. There's a lot of myth, particularly in our society, about snakes and what they represent. And um, what, what the, uh, the National Trust, for instance, has been putting out these public service announcements and, to, you know, to tell people what to do if they get bitten. But there, there are other aspects of, you know, the, the, um, what the venom is all about. And the venom has some certain med medicinal pro um, properties. And uh, this is something that we need to explore. Compton went on to explain why anti-venom is not readily available at health centers around the island. He said it remains part of the protocol to help tackle any difficulty that may arise with the application of the anti-venom. Sometimes complications can develop from the application of the anti-venom. And that, you know, when that happens, the patient needs to be treated in hospital. So this is why, you know, the, the instruction or the protocol says get to the hospital as quickly as you can. The new protocol is said to give a more explicit account of the necessary steps that need to be taken when an individual is bitten by a snake. However, one thing remains constant. The infected victim should get to the hospital as quickly as possible. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Solesh Alfred. The accessibility, efficiency and responsiveness of key health services is expected to improve as the Health System Strengthening Project for St. Lucia has been launched. More in this report from Fernell Neptune. The Health System Strengthening Project is aimed at improving health coverage to the people of St. Lucia. The project will entail a package of health services, introduction of financial incentives to improve service delivery, institutional capacity building, and also enhancing preparedness and response for public health emergencies. Minister for Health and Wellness, Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac, says she is very pleased that this project 
will impact the services of primary health care. The World Bank Health System Strengthening Project is well poised to push the primary health care agenda forward because this project is committed to the implementation of national health insurance while ensuring that our primary health care facilities are equipped to deliver services which will promote preventative care of the population, thereby relieving some of the burden on the secondary health sector. Health planner Lauren James called on the stakeholders to stay committed to the process as the Department of Health and Wellness work towards transforming the health sector. Basically, the project is aimed at improving accessibility, efficiency and responsiveness of key health services. And how do we aim to achieve that? For accessibility, the NHI will definitely address that in terms of our benefits package, giving our population access to a specified benefits package. Efficiency will look at how we make our healthcare providers more accountable, how we treat our patients according to protocols which will streamline how we treat patients in terms of unnecessary um, tests and that kind of thing. For responsiveness, we will look at how our health, how our health centers are best poised to respond to those um, demand on the services. The project is financed by the World Bank in the tune of the U.S. $20 million. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fina Neptune. The St. Lucia Development Bank has agreed to support the Chamber in hosting a business continuity planning workshop for the business community. The workshop will take place on Tuesday the 19th and Wednesday the 20th of February at the Creole Conference Room, Coco Palm Resorts. The St. Lucia Development Bank recognizing the great value such a workshop can have on participating firms, including its small and medium clients, has agreed to support the initiative. The program is also consistent and in keeping with the objectives of the Climate Adaptation Fund managed by the bank. Business continuity plans set out those procedures that ensure that an organization's processes and operations will continue after an accident or disaster, natural or man-made. The workshop will provide an opportunity for participating agencies to adapt and evolve their business plans and to become knowledgeable about risk analysis and management. For more details, contact the St. Lucia Chamber of Commerce. You're watching the Hot 790 News. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Oh, 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 oh,